Praise God. Amen. We give honor tonight to Pastor Lois Antoine and Prayer Changes Things Ministries and also to LEPC and to each one of you that are on the line tonight. This is the day that the Lord has made and we're going to rejoice in it and be made glad. Tonight we deal with part two, why saints suffer and what are God's purposes for allowing the winds of adversity in our lives. Psalms 34, 19, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Psalms 34, 19, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. I need you to hear me tonight because this is going to be very important for your growth and your maturity. Tonight, we see God's point of view for allowing adversities in our lives and the benefit of growth and maturity in the realm of the spirit, in the inner man, in our hearts. And so tonight, I need you to understand what are God's purposes for allowing the winds of adversity in our lives? First of all, our stronghold and our safe gate is the church. And I need you to understand that tonight that it is the assembly that God has brought together for us to understand the purposes of the word of the living God. The Bible said, and I say unto thee, thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16, 18. Now, not forsaking or neglecting the assembly together as believers, as is the habit of some people, and admonishing, warning, and heeding, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. Listen to me tonight, Hebrews 10 and 25. What day is that, saints? The day of adversity in our lives. You need the fortress and authority of Christ's church and his holy word to establish and settle you in the day of trouble. Afflictions of the righteous believers must go through. And again, that is found in Psalms 34, 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord deliver him out of them all. And I need you to hear me tonight. Also found in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. And it says this, My strength is made perfect in weakness. The purpose of growth are found in God's word. Understanding the winds of adversity through God's point of view Proverbs 24 and 10. Proverbs 24 and 10. It says this, and I want you to hear me. This is out of the word of God. If thou faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Our first response to adversity should not be to try to remove it. Are you hearing me tonight? But to allow it to reveal yeah. our true weaknesses. And I quote from Bill Gordon, Institute of Basic Youth Conflicts in Oak Brook, Illinois. Adversity has been defined as a fortune or fate, a condition marked by misfortune, calamity, or distress. A friend will show his or her colors in the time of adversity, an adversity or unfortunate event or circumstances. You will meet many adversities in your life according to the word of the living God. And so let me define when naturally and then when spiritually. A current of air, especially a natural one, that moves along or parallel to the ground, moving from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure, ammonitors or its effect on objects such as trees or waters, and these elements measure surfaces of the wind. When the wind is blowing, you know, but you don't know which way or where it's coming from. Therefore, we need two definitions tonight, not only the natural definition of wind, but we need the spiritual definition. The symbolic wind in the scriptures is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. 
And said, he said unto them, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy son of man and say to the wind, thus said the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon the slain that they may live. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse number nine. Listen, tonight also in the Holy Scriptures we are taught, so too the Holy Ghost comes to our aid and bears us up in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as oft and how to pray it worthily as we ought, but the Holy Spirit himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads on our behalf. Listen to me tonight with unspeakable yearning and groaning into deep utterances to the throne of the living God. Winds of adversity and the purpose of it in our lives. Today, we pray to focus and keep in mind what the Bible says. What then shall we say to all this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can be our foes if God is on our side? Romans 8 and 31. Romans 8 and 31. Look tonight at what God is dealing with for us and find out how we can in the midst of our troubles, our trials, and tribulations, and what really happens when the wind's adversity begins to blow in your direction. Remember, according to the Old Testament, these are the winds that blew in hurricane proportions in Job's life and circumstances. According to Job chapter 1, verse 13 through 19. Then we read Job chapter 1, verse 20 through 22. We see this mighty man's position in his faith toward God. And what he did will help us in the 21st century and in the month of April to deal with what is going on in our lives through adversity. Thank God for the book of Job. And all that Job suffered and went through, he kept God in his view, and he kept God in his focus. And all this, the Bible said, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Job chapter 1, verse 22. And again, the word of God states, men ought to always pray and not to faint. Luke 18 and 1. Therefore, our focus and purpose are in the midst of our adversities, is to pray and turn back to God for strength and growth. I need you to hear me tonight. It is now four months into the year of 2022, and I must declare to all of you tonight in the kingdom of God that adversities can be our greatest motivation for spiritual growth or our deadliest enemy of discouragement. The difference depends on your understanding and your outcome on why these afflictions are coming in your direction. You need to understand that all of these things have been already conquered through Jesus Christ our Lord. And he's here tonight to encourage you that whatever you're going through, it is time for you now to move into that direction so that you can grow in the purpose and in the focus of God's word. The Bible said this, what does the teacher and master of our lives, Christ Jesus, wants to show and teach us in the midst of the crises and adversities that we're going through? Listen to what the Bible said, and though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself anymore, but your eyes will constantly behold your teacher, Isaiah 30 and 30 in the Amplified. And let me read that again for clarification. And though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, notice that the Bible said it is the Lord that gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. But it also says, yet your teacher will not hide himself anymore, but your eyes will constantly behold your teacher. Again, Isaiah 30 and 30. Therefore, here are some absolute truths found in God's holy word about how adversity works on our behalf. And I need you tonight to again remember Job. 
let us look at how God is trying to capture our attention in the midst of our adversities. According to Proverbs 24 and 10, these truths will hold you up while you are going through your trials and afflictions in the next few days and in the months to come. Again, winds of adversity that blows in our lives. Again, I want to quote that our first response to adversity should not be to try to remove it, but to allow it to reveal our true weaknesses. Listen to what the word said. And he said unto me, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Second Corinthians 12 and 9. Our second response to adversity should be to focus on outward circumstances, but to realize that we are dealing with unseen spiritual powers. According to Ephesians 6 and 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. You are now moving for and toward the word of the living God to move you into a place of growth and maturity in spite of what you're going through. So listen to me tonight. Our third response to adversity should not be to live for Christ in our own efforts. Let me say that again. Not to live for Christ in our own efforts, but to realize that Christ must live in us through the power of his Holy Spirit. And then we find in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loves me and gave himself for me. Glory to the living God. And so tonight I need you to understand there are purposes for God bringing us through the winds of adversity. And lesson number one is he wants to get our attention. Let me say that again. Lesson number one, he wants to get our attention. Listen to me. The Bible said this, and your ears will hear a word behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left, Isaiah 30 and 21. Here as the child of the father, we must keep our heads and minds in the renewed position of Romans 12, 1 and 2, where God gives us the conscious and transforms our minds that we might understand whatever it is we're going through is for the glory of God and is to grow us and to mature us in this sin-cursed world. Listen to me tonight. Let's be honest and let's tell the truth. God's stiffest competition for our time, our attention, and our affections are the cares of this world. Let me say that again. Let's be honest and tell the truth. God's stiffest competition for our time, our attention, and our affections are the cares of this world. According to Matthew 13, 18 through 23, Matthew 18, 13 through 23 says this, Yet has he not root in himself, but do it for a while. But when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended, he is received seed among the thorns, he is that heareth the word, and cares of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes un fruitful. I need you to hear me tonight. God's ultimate purpose in getting our attention is to conform us to the very image of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. On the basis of this, all adversities work together for our good, and through it we learn of Christ, who is indeed lowly and whose burden is truly light. He wants us to come to him and learn from him about his father and his glorious future. He has planned for all believers, according to what our lady read tonight in John 14, 1 through 7. Again, when we look at the winds of adversity, we see trouble. We see afflictions. Are you hearing me tonight? We see oppositions and pressures along with chastening, anguish, testing or trials, which means that God will use all of these to help us grow and mature in the midst of our adversities. 
We know that the Spirit of God never tempts, but always tests His children in order for when to restore their lives from the pits of hell and Satan to a marvelous light in Christ Jesus. Again, adversity is always greater than our ability to resolve it. And usually when it comes into our lives, it comes in great stages of multiples over and over again until we learn how to process the lessons God has given us to grow and mature through the crisis and the crisis of life. This process helps us move forward into the mighty kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen to me tonight. If you are a child of God and living in this society of mess and corruption here in this city and in this country and even in this world, if you are not careful, your trials and adversity will become destructive if we fail to see the mighty hand of God behind all of our struggles, are you hearing me, and troubles. According to Isaiah 9, 13, For the people turned it not unto him that smited them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. Only God's help can move us from adversities into our real life lessons and spiritual growth, according to Psalms 121, verses 1 and 2. Listen to me tonight. While we are busy with our plans and setting our agendas for getting ahead, moving heaven and earth with our goals and private projects and acquiring friendships, listen to me, that are not God-ordained, God is patiently trying to teach us how to move into that special place of relationship with him that is beyond procrastination or selfishness. Jeremiah 35, 13 through 15. Jeremiah 35, 13 through 15 says this. It is a place where we listen to God and then obey his voice and his holy word. The prophet Jeremiah declared that God spoke these words himself. He said, thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, will you not receive instructions to hearken to my words, said the Lord, the words of Jonadai, the son of Rahab, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine or perform, for until this day they drink none, but obey their father's commandments. Notwithstanding, I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye have not hearkened unto me. I have sent also unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return ye now, every man from his evil way, and amend your doings, and go not after other gods to serve them. Them, and ye shall dwell in the land which I have given you and your fathers. You are, but you incline not your ear, nor hearken unto me. According again to Jeremiah 35, 16 through 19. If the sons of Jonadiah could obey him when he commanded them not to drink wine, then we can obey the Spirit of God when he commanded us to stand still and see the salvation of God. Finally, God's only plan in getting our attention is to conform us to his son's image. And that image is the Lord Jesus Christ. Can't you hear him saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. So what does it take for God to get our attention and conform us to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ? Lesson number two, adversities is our assurance that God loves us. Let me say that again. Adversity is our assurance that God loves us. For the Lord connects and disciplines everyone whom he loves, and he punishes every and scourges even our sons whom he accepts and welcomes to his heart and cherish. You must submit to and endure connection for discipline. God is dealing with you as with sons. For what son is there whom the father does not thus train and correct and discipline? Now, if you are exempt from correction and left without discipline in which all of God's children share, then you are illegitimate, an offspring that is not a true son at all. According to Hebrews 12, as 6 through 9, 
Proverbs 3, 11 through 12. Our translation states, then you are bastards mm -hmm. and not sons. Amen. The New Testament book of Hebrew teaches us also in chapter 12, 6 through 7, 10 through 11. When we recognize God's love in adversity, we are able to lift up hands which are hung down and feeble knees and make straight paths for our feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Listen, saints, today we need to turn out of the way and let it be rather healed by God. This makes us available for our total victory. And then this brings us into that special place where we see the assurance of his love in our lives, both in our mind that needs to be transformed and in our hearts that needs to be refreshed. Finally, living by faith in adversity, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 7 through 13, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 7 through 13, also shows us God's way, and also it shows us our weakness and failures to help ourselves in this life without God being the main attraction in our hearts and in our homes and on our jobs. Hear me tonight, what we see in humanity being depicted as weak and frail without the anointing of God in their lives is to restore mankind from above and not from below. I need you to understand tonight that this is why the gospel of Jesus Christ is not the work of grace produced by man's hand or his mind. Man is not the clever or intellectual flesh on parade using the strength of man instead of the precious mind of Jesus Christ. Listen to me tonight. We do need God in our lives to be successful. We do need God in our lives to be successful. How can I say this and you get the real meaning? We must realize that we are still residing in jars of clay and that the mighty hand of God is to mold and shape mankind into the image of Christ and make us productive that counts in the kingdom of Christ to win souls, transform lives of believers through the power of the word of God in the Holy Spirit. Hear me tonight. Lesson number three. Adversity is our evidence of spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. Lesson number three. Adversity is our evidence of spiritual warfare. If we do not recognize when adversity is spiritual warfare, we will be overwhelmed and tempted to give up. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 17, we are given the whole armor of God to combat spiritual darkness from Satan's kingdom. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 states, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are you saying tonight, Apostle? We need the word of God in our lives to be able to go through our trials, our tribulations and afflictions that are coming as a part of life's work. Now on the dark side of, in the devil's kingdom, we see him and his evil angels trying to convince the believer that God has forsaken him while he's going through his adversities and being chastened by God instead of his spiritual growth. But in reality, we see chastening is proof that God is loving, preparing all of his children for their greater glory in his kingdom. And I need you to know today, I said it over and over again, and I said again, if you are not going through anything, then you don't have anything. The test of knowing what you have is to produce the word of God inside and allow it to flow on the outside so that men and women can see the glory of God moving in your life in spite of all that you're going through. Amen. Listen to me tonight. We see the Apostle Paul encourage his spiritual son, Timothy, to be strong. Mm -hmm. and he said to him to be courageous and prepare to be a good soldier. Mm -hmm. Again, in the times of trials and tribulations, we need to follow the same road as we do when there is joy and praise in our lives. Listen to me, some good days and some bad days, but all of these days are working out 
for our good. Yeah. This is known. The word of God said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Remember, we're not fighting each other. Right. The Bible said we're not fighting flesh and blood, but we're contending with the enemy of our souls. And in the midst of all that you're going through, he wants to decourage you in order for you to stop moving in the things of God. Therefore, we must take a walk in the spiritual realm and stay out of the doorway of flesh when trying times are waging wars in our lives. Here in spiritual warfare, while going through, we need the tools of praise. Hear me. The tools of praise, the tools of prayer, the tools of fasting, learning to learn and lean on Jesus in every situation. And no matter what the circumstances are, you are fighting for your life. But the Bible said to fight the good fight of faith. Listen to me. Take a look at David and his giant. Take a look at the Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. Take a look at Daniel in the lion's den. Take a look at Paul and Silas locked up in jail. My God, take a look at your last battle and see how you got the victory when you fought with God's weapons as opposed to the flesh. Oh, praise God for adversity and then victory in God's word. Why are we going through, Apostle? We're going through, according to lesson number four, adversity is God's call for self-examination. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Let me say that again. Adversity is God's call mm -hmm. for self-examination. According to 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, that's 2 Corinthians 13 and 5 in the Amplify, it says examine and test and evaluate your own selves to see whether you are holding to your faith mm -hmm. and showing the proper fruits of it. Test and prove yourselves, not Christ. Do you not yourself realize and know thoroughly by an ever increasing experience that Jesus Christ is in you unless you are counterfeits, disapproved, on trial, and rejected? And I need you to understand tonight that whatever you're going through, the songwriter said, take the Lord along with you. You're going to need him everywhere you go. Here we see again, David, the king, is the apple of God's eye, yeah. according to Psalms 139, 1 and 2. And this is what David said, O oh Lord, you have searched me thoroughly and have known me. You know my down-sitting and my uprising. You understand my thoughts are far off. And so tonight I need you to know that God knows what you're going through. Yeah. God knows why you're going through. Mm -hmm. And what God needs you to know is that as long as you keep your mind transformed in his word and keep your heart stayed on the things of God. David said, yea, though I go through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because the Lord is with me. Yeah. And so tonight I need you to know that whatever it is you're going through, whether it's sickness or whether it's financial woes, whether it's trouble, trials, or relationships, God is moving you ahead yes. and giving yes. you an opportunity to stand the test so that you can move forward in the things of Christ. I need you to understand tonight that God has a way of bringing you out more than and a conqueror. So what are your motives for living in this life? What's your plan or goal for getting closer to the Lord Jesus Christ? Will you say like John the Baptist, I must decrease in order for him to increase? Isaiah said it in the chapter 55, listen to me in verse 6, he says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. When we are in the presence of God, we will examine ourselves like Isaiah did in Isaiah 6, 4 through 8. Then he said, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the Lord, ah, the glory of the Lord of hosts. Listen, saints, I need you to understand tonight that there is a purpose for God moving you in a place of growth. There's a purpose for God moving you in a place of maturity. 
Listen, saints, you know this is true. For if we would judge ourselves, the Bible said we would not be judged. Are y'all hearing me tonight? Amen. This is a point of emphasis that yeah. you need to understand. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31 to 32. First Corinthians chapter 11, 31 to 32. Revelations 3 and 19. Hear me, God requires that we search out, confess, and forsake every sin. Are you hearing me? Amen. According to Proverbs yeah. 28 and 13, it states, He that covered his sins shall not prosper, mm. but whose soul confesses and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Yeah. Repentance is for God's children who are able to realize that they have sinned and are ready to forsake their sins and live in God's righteousness and true holiness. Listen to me tonight. All God is doing is cleansing you through his word. Yeah. According to John 15 and 3, he says, you are cleansed through the word which I have spoken unto you. In conclusion, thoughts on the value of pain. In the physical realm, pain is one of our greatest protectors. Why? Without sharp and intense pain that persists in our bodies, which gives us warning, we will not know that something was fatally wrong with our system or our limbs, right. whereby damaging ourselves before we realize we need special care from the doctor or even in a hospital. I need you to know tonight, we need help. We need help yes. in our yes. bodies as well as being healed by the living word of God. According to Psalms 55, 4 through 16, here we learn that the pain of adversity should always cause us to pray and fast and be thankful for a prayer hearing God. Again, Amen. David the shepherd cried out in Psalms 139, 23 through 24 with these words. He said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and yes. know my yes. thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me. Yes. What is God doing? Moving wickedness out and bringing righteousness in. What is God doing? Moving the flesh out that the rim of the spirit might have free course with fellowship with the spirit of God and anointing that destroys every yoke. So David said, Lord, teach me how to examine myself in the light of your word. Teach me again, Lord, how to examine myself in the light of your word. And now we're cleansed through that word which he spoken unto us. And that is the word of the living God. Listen to me tonight. Lesson number five. Adversity is God's way of conquering our pride. Lord have mercy. Let me say that again. Adversity is God's way of conquering our pride. God's grace is free, but there is one essential requirement to receive it. It's called humility. Mm. Huh? For the holy book declares God resisted the proud, yeah. but give it grace unto the humble. Yeah. James 4 and 6. A man's pride will bring him low, but he who is of a humble spirit will obtain honor. Proverbs 15, 33. Proverbs 18 and 12. Isaiah 66 and 2, Matthew 23 and 12 tells us the adversity of contention reveals pride. Are y'all hearing me? You know and I know there are certain things that God is not pleased with in our lives. And so he's taken us through the trials of adversity to cleanse, to wash, and to restore us back into a place where we can have fellowship with him and him alone. Listen to me tonight. Only in my pride cometh contention. According to Proverbs 13 and 10, it says, In this day of our luxury and greed and clothing, cars and homes, wine, money and song, and it goes deep into the hearts of men and women, we need to let loose pride and fall on our knees to submit ourselves to the grace of a loving God. The song say, fall on your knees, Lord have mercy, and let go of anything that is going to keep you from the very presence of the living God. Hear me tonight, on this night, the adversity of destruction is the direct consequence of pride. 
Pride, the Bible says, goeth before destruction, mm -hmm. and a haughty spirit before fall. Proverbs 16, 18. Proverbs 29 and 23. Luke 14 and 11. When we look at worldly people, we see pride as their focus point, mm -hmm. and they have a haughty spirit about their ownership of things and possessions. There is an example in the book of Acts, and I need you to hear me tonight from Acts chapter 12, verses 20 through 24. Mm -hmm. You need to hear me tonight, which tells of the story of King Herod and his day in the palace before his nation, when he was lifted up in pride and arrogance while making a speech. King Herod made a great speech on the palace floor that caused the people to say he spoke as a god. Instead of him giving credit to the eternal God, he took the credit for himself. But the truth of the living God struck him down before the people, and he died a horrible death with worms going in and out of his body. Saints, this is a worldly tactic and should not be found in the heart of a Christian ministry. You need to be humble before the Lord. Whatever gifts he has given you, they're for his service and not yours. Lord, have mercy. Put your pride in check and you and you and you and you and me must understand that this is God's way of moving us now to grow up and to mature in the things that are holding us down. Listen to me. Put your pride in check. And you only did what a, the anointing of God allowed you to do through That's singing, through it. preaching, through praying. Amen. You didn't do this on your own. Right. It was the anointing Amen. of God and his destroying of the yoke that brought you to a place where people were saved and delivered. Not by you, but by the word of the living God. Amen. Saints today... God's word is teaching us to come out of the world system and its pride of doing things for credit and honor. And let's move into the kingdom of Jesus Christ where humbleness is the way of finding maturity. Lord, help us today. Lesson number six, adversity is our motivation to cry out to God. Let me say that again. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Adversity is our motivation to cry out to God. In this session, we learn about what it is for the saint to do in the moment of despair. And that is to cry out to God. Yes. Lord, have mercy. It is said the intensity of the cry of a child will determine how quickly the parents will respond. Let me say that again. It is the intensity of the cry of a child that will determine how quickly the parents will respond. According to Psalms 3, verse 4 and 5, will my voice, with my voice, I cry to the Lord, and he hears and answers me out of his holy hill, Selah. I will lay down and sleep, and I waken again, for the Lord sustains me. When I'm in trouble, I need to cry out to the Lord. The songwriter said, call on Jesus and he will answer your prayer. Amen. I need you tonight to look again and look this time within yourself. And I need you to know with a good hallelujah, thank God for what he has brought you through and thank God for what he's brought you out of. Lord, have mercy. Brought you out of trials and tribulations. Brought you out of trouble and brought you to a place where God could have his way. This is a time now where we need to understand the power and the spirit of God moving in our lives. Helping us to understand and respond to the things that God has brought us into. Listen, the righteous cry and the Lord hear it and deliver them out of all their yeah. troubles. Psalms 34, 17. You that are sitting in this place tonight, I need you to lift up holy hands and give God praise for being a forgiving God. Forgiving you for all of your trouble. Forgiving you for all of your trials. And bringing you to a place now where you understand that it is the things of God that's bringing you into deliverance. It is the things of God that is maturing you and growing you. Help us, Lord, to understand that you are bringing us out. And you're bringing us in to a place where we can worship and praise your name. 
points of reflection and focus will begin when we learn to cry out to our prayer hearing God. Unto thee I will cry, O Lord, my rock, be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear my voice of my supplication when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward the holy oracle. Psalms 28, verses 1 and 2, verses 6 and 9. Listen to me tonight. This should be your motivation to cry out to God. Let me say that again. This should be your motivation to cry out to God. Number one, when we are to cry out to God, we are to cry out with the voice, both within and without. According to Psalms chapter 3, verse 4. Number two, we are to cry out to God daily during our struggles and adversity in this life. Psalms 86 and 3. There is an old spiritual song in the church today that we used to sing. I cried and I cried. I cried to the Lord. My soul could not be contended until I found the Lord. Yes. Number three, we are to cry out to our God in humility, not in pride. Psalms 9 and 12. Ah, uh, as little children of the Heavenly Father, we must approach His throne in humility and humble ourselves to hear His answers, even when we're not ready to accept them. Glory to God. What He says is what He means, and what He means is what's going to be carried out. Yeah. Number four, we are to cry to God with our pure heart, because we are in self-examination removing sin and anything that would stop us from getting the answers that we need, according to Hebrews 12 and 1. We are to cry out to God in our spirit realm with praise, Psalms 56, 9 through 19. When we give God the praise for bringing us out of adversity and trouble and into our secret place of safety and peace, it adds a new life to our testimony. As we give our Christ praise in the midst of adversities and troubles, we will see all of our enemies turn back and flee, clearing up our pathway to move higher in the Spirit of God. Listen to me tonight, lesson number seven. Adversity is God's method of purifying our faith in Christ. Let me say that again. Uh, lesson number seven, adversity is God's method of purifying our faith in Christ. Adversity exposes our futility of putting our faith in anyone or anything other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith is stepping out on nothing and landing on the word of God. The Bible said now faith is yes. the substance of things yes. hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Mm. Though I don't see it, I'm going to believe yes. that God is with me and that his purpose is to strengthen me. That his purpose is to give me glory in the midst of my trials and the midst of my tribulations. Lord, help us tonight. Jude chapter 1 verse 20 in the Amplified said, But you, beloved, build yourself up founded on your most holy faith. Make progress, rise like an edifice higher and higher, praying in the Holy Ghost. Guard and keep yourself in his love of God, expecting patiently, wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, which will bring you and all of your adversities. Listen to me, unto life eternal. Then, number nine, hear me, adversity is God's purpose in our lives. Hear me tonight. Adversity is God's purpose in our lives. You say, Apostle, shouldn't we be free of all this? No. You go through trials and tribulations in order to learn that the Spirit of God is with you and that His purpose is to assist you and move you into a relationship with Him and Him alone. Adversity removes those things in which we put our trust in and our hope so that we can clearly see the faithfulness of God being invested in our spiritual lives. I need you to hear me tonight. Therefore, the scriptures teaches that it is essential for all believers to live in the Christian life because the way of God's 
way is to bring us out of the opposite of natural things into spiritual things. This is God's way. According to 2 Corinthians 5.17, he said to us, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away and behold, all things are become new. Listen to me. Finally, tonight, we see that Job passed the test in his bout with adversity. For in the 42nd chapter of Job, verse 10, we see it says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. O oh, glory, when we pass the test and get our reward in Christ, it is better health and spiritual strength for our hearts. Tonight, I need you to understand that the Bible said, but they that wait upon the Lord yeah. shall renew yeah. their strength. Yeah. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40 and 31. And so tonight as we close this lesson, I want you to understand that the Bible says God has given us the example of the eagle. And God does not permit adversity for our purpose of defeating us, but for the purpose of benefiting us and growing us into maturity. And listen to me tonight. What are the benefits of turbulent winds? That's what I said. What are the benefit of turbulent winds? Number one, turbulent winds cause the eagle to fly higher. Lord have mercy. There's a tremendous lifting power in the thermo overdraft updrafts of turbulent winds. The updraft caused the eagles to reach greater heights as he soars with them. And it's the same thing for you. As you go through turbulent winds, God is causing you to soar higher so that your relationship with him becomes deeper and more holy. I need you to understand tonight, number two, turbulent winds gives the eagle a larger view. The higher the eagle flies, the larger will be his perspective of the land below him. From the higher position, the sharp eyes of the eagle are able to see much more. And that's the same thing with you. When you put your eyes on the Lord, you began to see God's purpose and God's point of view. When you put your eyes upon the Lord, you don't see the trouble behind you, but you see the victory in yeah, front of you. Yeah. Number three, turbulent winds lift the eagle above harassment. A lower elevation, the eagle is often harassed by suspicious crows disgruntled hawks and other smaller birds as the eagle soars higher he leaves behind all of these distractions what am i saying to you tonight i need you as the saint of the living god to begin to soar in the things of god to begin to move now in the realm of the spirit to begin to crave the word of the living god to begin to say as the heart panteth after the water brook so panteth my soul after thee, O oh God. I don't know about you tonight, but I'm moving in the midst of all that I'm going through. Number four, turbulent winds allow the eagle to use less effort. Hear me tonight. The winds of the eagles, the wings of the eagles are designed for gliding in the winds. The feather structure prevents stalling, reduces the turbulence, and produces a relative smooth ride with minimal effort, even in the midst of rough winds and I need you to know that when you lift your hands to God and begin to praise him in the midst of your trials and your tribulations the song of praise will lift you to a higher height on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus name yeah. so we here tonight that if we move into the things of God like the eagle turbulent winds allow the eagle to stay up longer did you hear me tonight the eagle uses winds to soar and glide for long periods of time in the winds the eagle fly first glides 
a long shadow circle downward and then spirals upward with a thermal updraft. And what is God saying to you tonight? I will lift you up when you are down. I will bring you out when you are in. I will bring you to a place where you can trust in the Lord and know that all of these things are working out for your good. Listen, number six, turbulent winds help the eagle to fly faster. That's what I said. Turbulent winds help the eagle to fly faster. Normally, the eagle flies at a speed of about 50 miles an hour. However, when he glides in winds currents, speeds up to 80 to 100 miles per hour are not uncommon. So I need you to know the power of the Christian is to rise above pressures and temptations to come from the identification with the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering yeah. being made conformable to his death. Philippians 3 and 10. So finally tonight, hear me, my saint. You are in a place now where God is moving you from one good degree to another. And in order to do that, you need to know that the power of adversity in God's testing ground brings us to his glorious scripture found in Job 42, 16 through 17. After this, Job lived a hundred and forty years and saw his sons and his son's sons, even to four generations. So Job died being full of old days. I want you to know that God wants you to mature to the point that when death comes, yes. you know that you have you, victory Jesus. in Christ Jesus. Yes. So tonight, listen to me, adversity oh in the next dimension. Adversity is our reminder to pray mm. For our authorities, yes. adversity is our reminder to reevaluate our priorities. Adversity is our reminder to test our work and see if it's of Christ or is it of hay, stubble, and straw. Adversity lifts us from hatred and brings us to righteousness, to trust those that are living righteous in God and to beware of those that are living evil in the devil's camp. I need you to understand that as you go through, your eyes become sharper, your yeah. mind becomes transformed, your hearts become refreshed, and you know how to shift your friendship. Yeah. If they're not in God, walk away. If they're not in Christ, get away. Because the Bible said, how can two walk together except they're in agreement? And you need to agree with those that are agreeing with you and to identify with Christ. Here, finally, in adversity, it opens us up to accountability and it opens us up to help others to understand that what you have gone through, God delivered you. And when he brought you out, he brought you out singing. He brought you out praising. He brought you out giving thanks and letting others know that if God did it for me, yeah. he'll do it for you. Yeah. As I close tonight, all I need you to understand is that this is God's way of getting our attention and saying to you, come now, come unto me, all that are heavy laden. And what will I do? I will give you rest. Yeah. What kind of rest will that be? Rest in your mind. Rest in your spirit. Rest from the trials and tribulations you're going through. So hold on to the hand of God and let him have the right of way. And if you do, your adversities will be your strength. Yeah. If you do, your adversities will be your time of turnaround. If you do, your adversities will be the strength to know that God has brought me out and God will hold me up. So tonight as we pray, I need you to let go and let God, whatever it is you're going through, whatever it is that is moving toward you, I need you to know that you have the armor of the living God. Put it on to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. You have the power to speak the word of the living God and demons must flee. This is your night to understand I may be in trouble, 
but trouble don't last always. I may have trials, but trials don't last always. I'm going through, but I'm going through to finish to the finish line and declare victory in the things of God. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, hear us tonight as we repent and thank God for your assistance in our spirit, in our mind, and in our body. Lord, we invite you to have the right of way. We invite you to overtake and to bring us to a place where we understand that whatever it is we're going through, you've already given us victory, and you've already given us a song of praise. So tonight, help us to understand that these things are just a light affliction. Woo, glory be to God. They will pass, yeah. but what will not pass is our love for you wow. and your love for us. Yeah. So tonight, comfort us mm. ah, wow. with the yeah. word of the living God and allow the Lord Jesus Christ to have his way in our lives, teaching us and holding us and keeping us with a mind that's been transformed through the power and the word of the living God. We give you glory. Yeah. We give you praise. Yes, Hallelujah. 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 We give you the joy of knowing that your hand is upon us and that whatever it is we're going through, you will carry us to the end with victory and praise. Yes. And we give you glory and honor tonight in the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You that are on the conference line and you that are in Facebook Live, lift your hands tonight and give God glory for bringing you through your adversities, bringing you through your trials and bringing you out of your tribulation. Open your mouth tonight and give him glory. Let your voice resound loud. Let your voice be heard in the atmosphere. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I thank you tonight that I know now what I'm going through. I know now why I'm going through. But I know this, that you will bring us through. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Who glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I've had some sunshine. I had some rain. Lord have mercy. I've had some troubles. I've had some pains. But this I know. As David said, I'm going to examine myself and find out where I am and cry out to God. God have mercy on me. Help us to go through this trial, through this tribulation, through this affliction, knowing that after this, we'll have praise because you are the God that brought us through. God bless you tonight. God keep you tonight. Now you understand. Now you know what are God's purposes for allowing the winds of adversity in your life. Don't take it lightly, but stay with the word of God and move forward in this life, in this month, in this year and beyond. This is the Apostle Ellie Anderson, along with his wife, Evangelist Francis Anderson, saying until we talk to you again on Facebook Live, go with God. You're now back into the hands of our evangelist, evangelist and pastor, 